Hi everyone, you're watching the Virtual Amicus, and I'm Jay Lodha. So today's topic for discussion would be on a very niche area of law, niche area of practice, which is funds and asset management, SEBI. And joining us today uh, for this uh, presentation uh, is somebody who needs absolutely no uh, introduction in this very field. So today we are joined by Miss Ananya Sonthalia, who is at present a counsel at Tri Legal. And just to give you all a brief introduction about our Amicus for today's session. Uh, Ms. Ananya Sonthalia was female, uh, formerly working as a senior associate at AZBN Partners. And prior to that, she worked as an associate at Cyril Amarchand Mangaldas. So thank you so much, uh, Ms. Sonthalia, for taking out time and doing this session for us. It's a niche area of law. A lot of people are not even aware of what funds are, what asset management is. So I completely leave it to your wisdom. The stage is set. The floor is all yours. We've kept a Q&A format on this. And let me know whenever you're ready, anything that you wish to say before we start with our Q&A segment. No, I uh, just want to say thank you so much, Jay, for inviting me uh, to do this with you, because uh, I'm just aware and conscious that uh, we, ha I have worked with many uh, students who just join law firms, etc. And they come and they have designated our team, but they have absolutely no idea about what funds is. So I think this is a great way for people just to understand what funds is and what we do because otherwise they usually are very apprehensive as to what are they doing here and what work is going to be given to them so that's great thank you very well uh, we can start with the q a segment question number one uh, what do we exactly mean by funds and if you could explain to all the viewers in a nutshell what la uh, laws do uh, govern funds in india Okay, so uh, interestingly, uh, we live in a country where startups are blooming in every nook and corner of the country. And we keep hearing about this billion dollar valuation, this unicorn, and we keep hearing about them uh, writing in the newspaper that this startup has raised funding from these uh, from XYZ come uh, XYZ like be it a Tiger Global be it an Axel or be it like a Blackstone or a Carlyle depending on what they are raising funds for but uh, very seldom do people understand what these companies are so it's exactly these people i.e. like the likes of your Tiger or a Blackstone or a Carlyle or uh, any Panthera who are actually when capital firms and these are private equity firms and when you discuss funds it's act uh, it's effectively fund formation and fund structuring for people who are wanting to set up venture capital firms who are going to then in turn be deploying money and providing funds to these startups so while funds is just categorized as more popularly known as venture capital, private equity, or even hedge funds, there is also another, there are these side, not sidecar pockets or very specific areas of asset management, which do get incorporated or come within the gamut of this asset management. And those include inwits, REITs, which some of your viewers may have heard of. Then there's portfolio management, investment advisory, FPIs. So it's a very wide space, I would think. And at some point or the other, people would have read about them in the news, but may not have really connected it with saying that this is part of the funds practice area of law. And as far the law, as far as the laws are concerned, it, these are all mostly semi-regulated. Very well. Uh, going ahead with our next question. Uh, what exactly is the nature of your role as a counsel and what kind of work or what type of work is assigned to you in that capacity? If you could, if you could briefly describe to all the viewers. Sure. So I've actually been involved in this practice area now for the past eight years. So my work is pretty fluid. And if I had to just sum up in one sentence what my work was, would be, then it would be just setting up the entire fund which involves a lot of structuring. Structuring involves not just tax structuring, legal structuring, but it also involves geographies, jurisdictions. So in that sense, we get to work with some of these funds who want to set up, let's say, their entities in Mauritius or Singapore. That is a little more technical, but yeah, definitely happy to discuss if required. Uh, then it involves drafting of the fund documentation, 
uh, then negotiating with investors who are investing in the fund and finally in after all that achieving the when the fund goes into closure mode till then advising them uh, obviously there are various so setting up of a fund is like setting up a business except when you're setting up a business the pro promoter gets a person a company secretary or someone to set up a company and then the rest of the business criteria of that entire aspect those aspects are managed by the promoter themselves however because funds is regulated we are like partners of the promoters who are setting up this fund management and fund in institution uh, and guide them through the entire process right from setting up their entity till they finally start deploying the money very well now that we've discussed your role as a counsel uh, we would we, we obviously get tempted about you know discussing any landmark deals or any landmark projects that you've been part of any such matter matter that you wish to discuss in this very area yes uh, so we have been uh, so i have had the good fortune of uh, working on certain various complex transactions i would say uh, because ultimately fund structuring uh, we do the same work but what gives the thrill is that how a fund is going to impact what it's going to imp uh, how the fund is going to be impacting certain lives so we've been involved in certain funds which whose focus area is affordable housing for instance or whose focus area is sustainable development in backward states in india uh, where gov Governments have set up these funds. Uh, various uh, not international sovereign funds have come together and set up funds to develop infrastructure and real estate. And what is really thrilling and exciting about setting up these funds and you know uh, being partners or stroke legal counsels to fund managers who are you know raising capital is that what is the ultimate objective there are funds which i have been involved in in fact this was my first deal where the entire focus area of the fund or where the fund would be deploying capital would be the healthcare space and uh, this was pre covid but there was like a very uh, the only focus of that fund was to put uh, in uh, make investments in healthcare women healthcare and safety and it's just heartening to know and to learn about the impact that kind of fund has had during covid times where it has been able to raise capital for its portfolio companies and you know effectively companies which it was funding like startups etc and keep them afloat in the healthcare sector and how it has been a support to the already crunched healthcare care sector in the covid situation very well and uh... talking about landing up in this field how did you identify your passion in this very field and how did you land up here was it was it by accident was it by design did you plan the scheme of things before you decided to specialize in this very niche area of law yeah so uh, actually it was by design by accident i would say a bit of accident and a bit of design uh so in my first two years uh, which i don't think you mentioned but right after law school i joined in this law now in this law as everyone might have heard is a very big for uh, known name in the field of venture capital and private equity so uh, while my at my during my time there i was involved in a couple of transactions which involved uh, investments by venture capital firms private equity firms in startups in india and uh, that is the time when i used to hear my our clients who were the venture capital firms refer to their lps gps etc and their fund documents uh, and so on and so forth and uh, all this jargon seemed extremely exciting to me but at the same time i had absolute no clue of what they meant so thankfully i had a great mentor in the partner there who i was working with and she used to sit down and explain to me that how we see and p terminology has this jargon but at the same time they have these funds etc she explained the entire scheme of things to me how these people raise capital from their investors who are the lps and 
uh, then the they deploy the capital and when they are deploying capital they need to adhere to the fund documents and that's what got me really excited into knowing more or understanding more about these funds and uh, thankfully an opportunity came at that time and in Cyril Mang uh, the Cyril Amarchan Mangalda's team funds team at that time and uh, I joined that and from there on I've been with the same team or uh, they moved to AZB so I moved with them and then I moved uh, the team moved from AZB to Trilegal and that's how I moved with the team because it's just been a great learning experience and I would say that the my team has basically nurtured me mentored me and helped me grow and become the lawyer that I am fantastic and uh, so what would be your piece of advice to all the young lawyers, law students watching this, to all the subscribers who wish to build a successful career like you have in this niche area of law? And along with that, if you could recommend any books or any literature? Yeah, so my advice would be that there is no substitute for hard work and there are going to be many failures. There are going to be many pitfalls. And I can say that there are going to be times when your seniors are going to be very strict with you, very harsh with you. But then you just have to remember that Rome was not built in a day. And you have to keep just going at it. And somewhere you will realize that you've got the hang of it. Uh, and uh, you're fine. You'll be fine. I think that's what the bottom line is, that you will be fine. And you should not give up. In terms of books and all, yeah, they, uh, they can... Uh, from a practice area perspective or you're asking generally? No, generally. Uh, I think both from practice area perspective or generally as, as a law student, what books can they refer to? Is there any particular literature available or does this happen over a period of time when you, you know? So while this might sound very theoretical and this might sound very nerdy, I was, a, uh, when I was in college, I became a big fan of my philosophy lectures and uh, I particularly looked to guidance towards books and teachings of Hobbes and Locke and Rousseau and those were like my favorite books because somewhere in the middle of extremely uh, complex English you will come across some really uh, some real phrase which are going to be words to stick by um, so I think uh, that's what and uh, you know the fact that these expressions like Rome was not built in a day or uh, man is but go, a utilitarian being etc so I think those are the kind of things which really sometimes drive you and uh, what encourage you or motivate it can motivate you in various ways so I think that's what people should I mean try reading those kind of books but I do read a lot of light-hearted um you know fiction etc as well and I think one thing which I want to just tell young readers is that while it's great you should read books and do everything you should also take out time for your hobbies and I think a lot of people get so pressurized by the environment of a law firm or the legal profession and especially in your younger years when you're feeling that nothing's going your way but take that little time out to take a break to relax to unwind listen to music and you'll be fine fantastic and now uh, talking about mentor uh, who was your mentor in your journey Wow, that's a very difficult, quite, quite complicated question. Uh, I have been but very fortunate to have mentors throughout uh, my career and not just my career. Before I started, uh, I had a, uh, there's my elder cousin uh, who was in the same field. And if not for his guidances from time to time on what I should be doing or why am I rather more importantly, why am I not doing something? Uh, I think uh, I wouldn't be here because had he not pushed me to give my symbiosis law school exam, I wouldn't be probably having a law career. I was very sure that I'm going to give the CLAT exam. I'm going to 
crack one of the national law schools and I'll make it but I didn't get through any of the national law schools so I think that is something I, I think I have to give credit to him at the beginning of my career but uh, in my legal profession every organization I have gone to I have had the good fortune of having a bunch of mentors all the time like I mentioned earlier on that in my first law firm I had a partner who was a mentor figure like a mother figure to me she guided me through all the transactions and not just transactions but just how to navigate life then I moved to the team which I'm currently with and my current boss has been my constant mentor when I needed to get a little bit of beating and strictness to be taught she was like a teacher then eventually now I think she has culminated herself into like a friend philo philosopher guide everything <laughs> rolled into one who just keeps guiding me from time to time to do everything so I think it's I, I there are a lot of people and like they say it takes a village to go anywhere that's what I would say is the case with me very well and, and lastly how has your journey been so far uh, and if you could share any lessons that lo you've learned over the years any mistakes that you made um, made many mistakes continue making mistakes how has the journey so far been? I would say I've been very fortunate. My I mean, like anybody's journey, I have had my tough days, very sad days, very excited and happy days. And you always feel that, oh my God, oh, what's going to happen? And you're, you're having those days when you're just upset and low and down. But there are those days when you're extremely high or you're on a high or upbeat about what you're doing. And uh, I guess the day, uh, the only thing to remember is that success and failure both are imposters and you shouldn't take any of them seriously. And I think what motive, what I keep in mind always is that is the famous lines by Robert Frost, which is, I have miles to go before I sleep. I have miles to go before I sleep. And that's what encourages me to wake up the next day and get going at work. Brilliant. So uh, thank you so much there, uh, Miss Ananya Santhalia, for doing this session for us, Thanks. for taking our time. It's a niche area of law. A lot of lawyers, law students have absolutely no clue because SEBI as a field, yeah. SEBI as a subject is so vast. And then now yeah. you have a field called asset management, uh, funds. Absolutely. You know, there are, I and I hope that there are these courses that are available that students pursue, um, you know, in the capacity of a law student or even young lawyers for that matter. Because this exposure is so important in today's time. So I'm glad that this session happened. I'm happy. Yes, I, I, I also want to, that, that's what I want to say that, you know, in fact, people just know about SEBI. And in fact, there are a lot of people who get scared. I, I know that when college students come right out of college, they are just not uh, made aware in college how to go about the SEBI website or what really SEBI governs etc and broadly if people have even done internships they'll only know about like the takeover code or the insider trading code but the rest of the 10-15 regulations which are actually popping up on SEBI's website are very yeah, yeah, you there? Please, yes of course of course please go on Okay, no, I'm saying the rest of the 10, 12 regulations, which are actually on the SEBI website, people have no clue about that. And that's really sad. So I really want to encourage everyone to take a little time and uh, read about it. It's a very interesting field of law. You really feel that you're helping your client set up something big, some business uh, like setting up a business and you feel way more involved than you would feel in a one or in an m and &E private equity transaction side which you're just doing absolutely and it is so important to be well equipped to understand what is happening around you uh, you know and these yes. super specialized areas of law uh, niche areas of law that we are otherwise not exposed to in our law school curriculums the time has come now for to do these certain amends and introduce them uh, you know, in these little chapters of SEBI so that every student gets exposed to them at some point. Yeah. And in fact, um, you know,
No, actually the entire discussion we've had, we've kept it very specific and guided to funds. But uh, actually the thing is that when I started doing funds, it actually opened my eyes and it helped me become a better transaction lawyer as well because I was able to understand what the sum of... In fact, in some of the big ticket transactions also, there are private equity and venture capital funds involved, whether it be equity or whether it be debt. And honestly, as being a funds lawyer, it gives me a whole other understanding of what they are looking for in a transaction, which you might not necessarily understand unless you have spent a few years of practice or you know without like having done that assisted them or having had discussions with them on the fund formation side or uh, at least at a junior level I know that lawyers find it very difficult to understand what the client is really trying to get at so I think it just has helped me even become a holistic lawyer I, if I can say so so I know that I am not a very senior person, but still, I think that it's given me a very rounded view of transactions in general. So, yeah. No, I'm so grateful that you did this session for us. Uh, for all the viewers, you took out time on a Sunday. Uh, we spoiled your Sunday afternoon plans. <laughs> no, absolutely uh, not, <laughs> not. Absolutely not. If any of your viewers and law firms, they know that we're all working on Sundays also. <laughs> we don't How can really I forget that? <laughs> no, So to <laughs> yeah. all the viewers who are watching, feel free to write to us. Our email is mentioned on the channel in case you have any queries with respect to uh, asset management or funds as career practice or career uh, as, as an area of law, as a niche area. And any of the fundamentals or concepts, feel free to write to us. We'll be more than happy to forward the same to our Amicus for today's session. Thank you so much for doing this session. Thank you so much for taking our time. Really means a lot to me and my entire team. And it's goodbye for now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.